tonight on Access TV. Live live with Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Fahim Anwar, Jenna Friedman, Andy Hendrickson, Roberto Vanderpool, and your host, Judah Friedlander. From the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Judah Friedlander. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Thank you for the uh, sitting ovation, everybody. Thank you. That was a very perfect level of applause. Well done. I looked at everyone clap. You guys are all very good. Sir, you were excellent. Not bad. You were the best, dude. Let's see it again. Just you. See? He's such... He is such a good clapper, he actually injured himself when he clapped in the opening segment. That's dedication to art right there. Thank you, sir. And what do you got, buddy? No, that's, why don't, why don't you get the fuck out of here right now, okay? That's the worst clapping skills I've ever seen. I want you to go to the library, buy a book about clapping technique. Don't borrow a book, purchase a book from the library and come back here in six weeks and we'll try this shit again, okay, buddy? <laughs> Sir, you're wearing a long sleeve shirt. It was 100 degrees today. <laughs> How fucking hot does it have to get <laughs> before you go to your storage facility <laughs> and you bust out one of those short sleeve shirts? So <laughs> this is it. This is fucking go time. This is what we got. It's time to live it up, man. Cool. And you're wearing a long sleeve shirt with the sleeves rolled up. You wore the wrong shirt. <laughs> you should have worn a short sleeve shirt. You underestimated indoor night heat. <laughs> Step it up, guys. Get your shit together. Anyone sing in the shower? Yeah? Not me. I play the drums. <laughs> I'm a rebel, dude. What kind of music you guys like? I like underwater Canadian teen pop. Uh, Justin Bieber drowning. That's uh, it's, it's pretty good stuff right there. And you're wearing a long sleeve shirt with shorts, no socks. Two seasons, one outfit. Well done, dude. You are ready for any weather system. That is a climate change prepared wardrobe right there. Good job, dude. Anyone getting laid tonight, yeah? Good job, guys. Cool. All right. <laughs> Nothing at this table. You guys just gonna have a Sudoku party and hit the pillows. That's it. Okay. All that wardrobe shit for nothing, dude. All right. Cool. I had a dream the other night. I was in bed with ten hot chicks, and then I woke up and found out I was in bed with twenty even hotter chicks. <laughs> That's the only nightmare I've ever had. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Fucking perfect. I'm a sex symbol. Five out of four women want to fuck me. I, uh, I just saw that on the news, man. It was pretty cool shit. My new hobby is making movie sequels that nobody wants to see. Do you remember the old film Stand By Me? I just made a sequel. It's called Sit Over There. I, uh, I'm also making movie prequels that nobody's looking forward to. Are you familiar with the classic Hitchcock film Psycho? I just made a prequel to Psycho. It's called That's a Weird Kid. That kid is fucked up. Something is off. I made a prequel to Gone with the Wind. It's called Still Here in a Light Breeze. Boring film, but it sets up the original perfectly. I'm the world champion. I'm the greatest karate hero in the world. Any other martial artists here tonight besides me? Cool. What belt are you, baby? Yellow. Yellow? You know, I wouldn't even say that to yourself, let alone in front of... Other people who may or may not know you, okay? I'm an extra dark black belt. <laughs> Don't look me the way, dude. I'll fuck you up, dude. I grew up on a dead-end street because I killed all my neighbors. <laughs> I just installed a panic room in my house in case criminals break in. They can go in there and feel safe before I come in and kill them all. When I go to a rap concert and a rapper says, throw your hands in the air, I karate chop off his hands and throw them in the air. 
And then I catch him and wave him like I just don't care. <laughs> I weighed 26 pounds when I was born. <laughs> Took my mom 365 days to deliver me. My birthday is every day. <laughs> I live in the city because I'm banned from the forest. <laughs> That's when you're good at karate, dude. When the grizzly bears start talking to the Bigfoots and form an alliance to ban you from the forest. <laughs> Fucking good. You guys want to see me do a karate move? Yeah. I just did it. You missed it. <laughs> you got to work on your vision speed. I'm going to be the next president of the United States. Is anyone going to vote for me for president in 2016? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? Okay, fine. Maybe you want to hear more about my political platform before you cast your vote. I'll ask you a question, young man. Do you like Hawaii? Okay. Well, as president, I'm going to move it to Lake Michigan. <laughs> Hawaii is beautiful. It is too far away. We move it to Lake Michigan. It's a five-minute canoe ride from downtown Chicago. Easier for the entire country to visit. Do you all like California? Do you like New York? Both cool, again, too far away. I have a solution. California here, New York here. We take the Midwest and we move it above Canada. <laughs> New York and California come closer together. You can now take the E train from the Empire State Building to In and Out Burger in 23 minutes. And that's on the local train. And yes, it runs on weekends. And moving all that land around, that's going to create jobs. <laughs> Economy fixed. Don't worry about the Midwest. They'll be OK. They're above Canada. They're closer to the North Pole. They'll get their Christmas presents first. <laughs> Everyone goes home happy. Any other questions about my presidency? Any other issues? Foreign affairs, unblurred Japanese porn. Hear me out on this. It's more complicated than you think. It goes back all the way to World War II, where there were a lot of atrocities. One of them, the United States dropped the bomb on Japan, devastating their country, killing thousands and thousands of people. Forty years later, Japan blurred the penises and vaginas and their pornography. Victory, Japan. <laughs> it's time for a truce. Good question, on topic, provocative. Well done, sir. <laughs> Any other issues? What about taxes? What you do with taxes? Lower them? Raise them on some people? Have you guys never fucking paid taxes in your life? You guys don't know what we're talking about? What do you think we should do with taxes? What do you think? Well, no, no, no. Here's my plan. Canada pays our taxes. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Celine Dion. Bieber, Nickelback, enough is enough. <laughs> They've been polluting our airwaves for years. It's time to pay the price. <laughs> Any other issues? Immigration. I'm deporting you at 8.30 tomorrow morning. <laughs> Didn't care for the tone of your voice. Anyone else who might be in this country illegally gets to stay for free at your house forever. <laughs> Thanks for being a team player. <laughs> Any other issues? Marijuana. Marijuana. Education. If you go to school, you got to smoke marijuana. Good combination question from the audience tonight. Well fucking done. You gentlemen just turned yourself a cabinet position. Here's the deal, man. Now, I don't do drugs. I'm a role model to children. But I think drugs is a personal decision, not the government's business. So yes, I'm going to legalize drugs. But I'm not going to start with marijuana. I'm going to start with heroin. <laughs> if we legalize heroin first, it'll be very easy to legalize marijuana after that. <laughs> strategy, strategy. You got to know how to work Congress. Fuck it. I'll start by legalizing meth. And I'll sidestep Congress. I'll take it right to the people. I'll mail everyone in the country an envelope. You mail back teeth, that's a yes. <laughs> Power to the people. Any other issues? I'm telling you, voting for anyone else besides me is pointless, okay? It's like opening up a shelter for battered pinatas. It's pointless. It's fucking pointless. 
foreign policy. We already talked about it. I guess I need to work on a listening and comprehension program as well. <laughs> Are you guys ready for more show? We got a great show for you guys. We're coming back in a minute. Stick around. It's live right here, New York City, Gotham Comedy Club. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Andy Hendrickson is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Welcome back to the show, everybody. For you watching at home, uh, there were some uh, cool sex acts going on here at the club. You missed it at home. And are you ready for your next act, everybody? Put your hands together. <laughs> Hilarious gentlemen, you've seen him on the David Letterman Show. Please welcome Andy Hendrickson. <laughs> Right. Hey, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Nice to be here, you guys. I love this job. Being a comic, I used to have an office job, small office. 13 people, 10 women. Yeah, that's right. First day I was like, sweet. Two weeks later I was like, fuck. <laughs> I'm not picking on women. I love women, but sometimes you get 10 women together in a cramped, high-stress office environment. Little tiny things will get blown way out of proportion. Walk to the break room like, hey, what's wrong? Oh, Betsy, she just took the last cup of coffee. She didn't even make a new pot. It says right on the wall next to the coffee machine. You kill it, you fill it. She dresses like a whore. <laughs> what's that got to do with coffee? <laughs> a lot of travel in this job. I like the airport. That's the only place you get to see people that are really out of shape running at full speed, you know? <laughs> like if you were late for everything, you'd be in really good shape, buddy. Uh-oh, Cinnabon. <laughs> Starbucks every 10 feet at the airport, that's my favorite. I stopped at a Starbucks over the holidays. They're doing a promotion. They asked me if I want to buy a pound of coffee to send off to the troops. I'm like, hell yeah, I'll do that. Then the lady puts me in the spot. She goes, well, we write him a message and we send it to him. What kind of message do you want to send him? Like, shit, I don't know, stay alert, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I just get the small cup of coffee. That's how they hook you, man. It's the gateway drug to all the, to all the other crap they sell there, right? You get a small cup of coffee, you're hanging out, people are typing stuff. There's weird music on, you feel like you're part of something. <laughs> Finally, one day, you break down like, hey, let me get one of those frozen things with the whipped cream. Right there, they got you. You just went from marijuana to methamphetamine, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it happen, those people ordering in front of me, they're so far gone down the Starbucks rabbit hole, like, hi, could I get a half-calf decaf soy latte, caramel macchiato, skinny, Two pumps of vanilla, no foam, no whip, shot of espresso, make that cold, light ice, three sugars of Splenda and a sweet low, grande and a vente cup with cream, room for cream. Like, how the fuck do you know how to order that? <laughs> it used to be coffee. <laughs> I don't drink the hot tea. I don't do it. I don't know. It's very fancy, refined. There's string involved. I'm not going to do it. Anytime someone orders hot tea in front of me, I have this impression in my head that they're thinking like, you know, I'm just a little bit better than you are. Yeah, yeah, enjoy your coffee, you savage. Yeah, I, I have balance in my life. Namaste, egg whites. It's a very British thing to drink the hot tea. You ever hang out? You gotta drink hot tea six times a day if you hang out with someone from England, you know? The Americans, we got pissed off at the Brits back in the uh, well, 1700s. We pushed all their tea into the Boston Harbor. I'm sure you guys remember that from history class, yeah. I don't remember exactly why I went to public school, but <laughs> something to do with the tea, we tried, we got angry at the tea or something. <laughs> remember it's blurry, like we tried to drown the tea. You can't drown the tea, that just makes more tea. I don't think they thought it through. Then, <laughs> then we were like, how can we get back at the Brits with their hot tea, iced tea? That's how we did it, right? <laughs> That's very American. You guys sip your tea, you pussies. We're gonna chug it, yeah! USA, USA. Hey, let's put some high fructose corn syrup in this shit. USA, you what about Red Bull and ginseng in a 40 ounce can? USA, oh my God, I'm fat. That's the history of America. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> 
Yeah, so. It's been a good year. My brother got married. I had to get a suit. Uh, yeah, I had the same suit for like 10 years, you know, until a female friend pulled me to the side. She's like, you know, you got to change that. I'm like, what do you mean? It fits. She's like, there's cuffs, there's pleats, there's pads in the shoulders. It's time to move on. So I walked into a suit shop downtown Manhattan, no research, right? These, police, these people are good. They know what they're doing. I, I walk in, there's a really hot salesperson, you know, a hot chick. She comes over, Erica with an H. <laughs> she, she asked me if I, if I want to buy a suit. I'm like, yeah. She goes, would you like a glass of wine? Right there. I should have known there was a problem right there. You're, you're giving me booze to buy clothes. Like, that. you don't go into Old Navy and like, here's some whiskey. Go buy some shit, you know? <laughs> like, oh, it's so cheap, yeah. So I, got, I have like three glasses of wine. I'm trying clothes on, you know? This girl knows her stuff. Next thing I know, there's a $2,000 suit hanging on the rack. I'm half drunk. I got my credit card out. I have to stop myself. I'm like, whoa, this is too expensive. I, I can't, I can't afford this. And she goes, well, how often are you gonna wear it? And I said, have one wedding coming up. That is not enough to justify this purchase. I would need a few more events. Like, like some funerals would probably help. Like, <laughs> like if I buy this suit, some people have to die is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> And I mean, I have one friend who's kind of depressed. I can't bank on that. That's a real long shot. I don't want to set up that precedent. I want my buddy being like, dude, I'm so bummed out. Like, well, how bummed out? Should I get my suit cleaned? Or you want to watch a sad movie or something? Sometimes you get a good story from a wedding. I had a buddy who got married who got uh, cold feet. Uh, we're in the back of the church. I'm a groomsman. He starts losing it, starts pacing around. I don't think I can go through with it. If I walk that back door, I solve a lot of problems. I'm like, do it. I'm a comic, I could use this. <laughs> no, he's happily married now. And, but he kind of got coerced into getting married, right? It was like an erosion of his willpower over time, like a slow wearing down over the years, like a, like a grinding away. Like that old Tootsie Pop commercial. Like, how many licks does it take to get to the center of my delicious Tootsie Pop soul? I don't know, maybe we should move in together. A one. <laughs> Hey, let's watch Dancing with the Stars. A two. We should get a puppy. A three. I'm pregnant. Three licks. <laughs> so. It's a good year. My older brother had a baby. That was exciting. He was so excited about having this kid, he snapped a photo of the baby with his iPhone, emailed it out to everyone in the family 20 seconds after the baby was born. A little too soon. <laughs> Called him up, was like, hey man, I'm happy for you. I'm sure your kid will be beautiful one day. Uh, you should give it a couple weeks. Let the baby air out a little bit. <laughs> Develop some features. Because new parents always want to know, like, what do you think it looks like, mom or daddy? I think it looks like a potato, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now I'm hungry. So he's the overachiever. Navy, my dad's Navy. I get along great with my dad now. We used to butt heads when I was younger. He was kind of a workaholic. Missed a lot of my events. He told me he feels guilty about that and he shouldn't have because we like to pick on each other. I'll call him up late at night after I've had a couple. <laughs> Leave messages on his voicemail like, boop, cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. <laughs> Little boy, blue head, I'm drunk again and it's all your fault, click. single, I'm dating. Yeah, I don't know. Didn't work out with my last girl. She drank a ton of wine. Call herself a wine connoisseur. I'm like, no, you're drunk. It's like saying, I don't have a drug problem. I'm a cocaine enthusiast. We broke up while we were drinking wine. That stuff's like truth serum, man. I thought her relationship was solid and she just blurts out, well, I just want to be taken care of. I don't really want to have to worry about a job or any, earning any money. I guess I'm just traditional. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, we have so much in common. I have those exact same hopes and dreams. I just thought I was lazy. Turns out I'm traditional. Oh, thanks. So I tried to be charming. I was talking to a girl last summer. I was like, hey, I really like your glasses. She goes, oh, thanks, they're fake. I just wear them because they make me look more smarter. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I was like, I think you need a stronger prescription. <laughs> she goes, I don't get it. I said, I know. 
That's it for me, you guys. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Jenna Friedman is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Put your hands together and please welcome this next hilarious comic making her television debut. Please welcome Jenna Friedman. Hi. It's nice to be here. A friend of mine asked if I'm seeing anyone, and I told him no, but on the way over here, a crazy person chased me into the subway. So, like, I still got it. <laughs> I've been thinking that a lot lately, just because, like, the other day I got a back massage, and the masseuse kind of crept his hand into my inner thigh, and I was, like, creeped out, but then I was kind of like, oh, <laughs> he's flirting. <laughs> still got it. Um, side note to ladies, if you do feel like you're being threatened or being chased, people say you're supposed to yell fire instead of help so that more people will come to your aid. I think the best thing to yell is, I love you! <laughs> because then everyone will look and be like, who's that idiot? And then your rapist will lose his erection. Um, <laughs> because that phrase makes men... <laughs> lose their erections. Um, <laughs> speaking of, my ex-boyfriend. Uh, may he rest in peace. <laughs> He's not dead. He just has trouble sleeping. He's like... <laughs> He's like this depressed hipster, which is like saying chai tea. Um, it's just two words that mean the same thing. Have you ever seen a couple walking down the street and gotten bored for them? <laughs> they, uh, thank you. If not, it's because you just moved to Manhattan and now they're all on city bikes. Um, I feel like city bikes come in pairs of bored couples, uh, with the silver lining being that none of them are wearing helmets. <laughs> I know, I shouldn't make fun of bored couples. I, I actually defend couples. Like, I hate when people see a couple making out and then yell at them and tell them to, like, get a room. I feel like that's so obnoxious. Like, that phrase should only be reserved for people eating alone. <laughs> get a room, your loneliness is bumming us out. <laughs> I wrote that joke when I was eating alone, and... <laughs> I thought it was so funny, but I had no one to share it with. <laughs> a friend of mine just broke up with his insignificant other, and um, he asked me for dating advice, and I told him it's very important when you take a girl on a date, be sure to tip the waiter at least 20%, but no more than 30%, so that we see that you're generous, but not also a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I can make fun of waiters because I date them. I date all types. Um, I was on a date with a German guy recently, and I showed up eight minutes late to the date. And he actually yelled at me for being late. He's like, ugh, you were late. That's so un-German of you. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> Just because I'm Jewish, so it's like nice to be called un-German um, for other reasons. <laughs> he taught me a lot. Uh, he taught me the word for pubic hair in German. Uh, which is shamhar, which translates to shame hair. <laughs> the word for pubic hair in German is shame hair. I don't know the word for pubic hair in Italian, but I'm sure it's a lot more loving, you know? <laughs> Something like body pasta. <laughs> I don't know. German's not a romance language. Uh, the word for, I mean, it's just not. The word for nipples in German is Brustenwarzen, which translates to breast warts. Like that <laughs> is not a joke that I wrote. That is actually 
the language. I, I don't think German's a romance language, but you know what I think is? I think that Japanese is a very overlooked romance language because they have a word to describe a lover's suicide. Like the word is Shinju, and they have one word to describe it because it happens so often. Like if that's not romantic, <laughs> my point is that I'm having a really hard time meeting people. <laughs> Thank you, other woman. Women are my target demo. <laughs> We just don't know it yet because we're taught to hate each other. But um, <laughs> thank you. I am having, thank you guys. I am having a hard time meeting people just because like, I don't know, like my version of what's romantic is flawed. Like I think there's nothing more romantic than two people who are madly in love and die at the same time. I know it's morbid, but I just think it's like, seriously, you're at the height of your passion. You die, there's no heartbreak, there's no regret, there's no sadness. You know, you're just like in and out. So, this isn't a joke yet, but my advice, <laughs> my advice to the ladies looking for love, if you don't want to go the Shinju route, just like find a really good guy who's a really bad driver. <laughs> I know it's dark. I know, my comedy's a little dark. A friend of mine's really into it. She's really into dark, sad things. And the other day she asked me to recommend a good tearjerker for her, something that would really make her cry. So I told her that she should watch 45-year-old single women stare at other people's children. <laughs> I know, I know, thank you. I know, I know you guys. That's sad and that's self-deprecating. That's gonna be me. I don't have kids that I know of. Um, yeah. But I'm a big fan of moms. Are there any moms in the audience tonight? Oh, nice, you should be home with your kids. Um, <laughs> I love you guys. I love single moms too. I feel like single moms are so like indie, you know? So like DIY. Um, I was in Whole Foods the other day and I saw this woman talking to her obviously adopted child, Whole Foods, and I thought, note to self when I adopt, don't give your obviously adopted child an even more ethnically inappropriate name, you know? Like he's already gonna be the only Cambodian in the Montessori school with a cleft palate. Why are you calling him Mordechai? <laughs> it's just not right. It seems hard being a mom. It seems really hard just cause like this thing falls out of you and if it breaks, you can get arrested. Like that's a tough, <laughs> It's a tough gig, you know? And it seems hard in a lot of states, really basically the whole South, not being a mom, just because of like all the laws against women's rights. And uh, this is a real funny one. But for example, like in Virginia, if you want to get a bobo in the state of Virginia, sorry, an abortion. <laughs> if you want to get a bobo in the state of Virginia, you actually have to get an ultrasound and wait 24 hours until you're eligible for your abobo. And I know some of you guys are getting tense. This is not a political joke. It's like regardless of whether you're pro-choice or an asshole, like that's not, <laughs> it's not, I'm not political. I just, I don't understand the policy. Like that's my question. I don't understand what makes lawmakers think that showing women photos of our fetuses is gonna like inspire us to keep them. Like you guys know what those look like, right? <laughs> They're not cuddly. <laughs> They're like little tumors with eyes. <laughs> it's like, if you want me to keep a child, don't show me a photo of a fetus. Show me a photo of, I don't know, myself in 60 years, trying to walk down a flight of stairs alone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is dark. Lastly, I had a job interview a little while ago with a guy who dated a friend of mine in college, sorry, date raped a friend of mine in college. Very awkward interview, I thought I nailed it, but I never heard from him. So I waited the two weeks, gave him a call, was like, hey, did I get the job? He said no. Next day I show up, 8 a.m. sharp, ready to go. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I'm sorry. I thought no meant yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Fahim Anwar is taking the stage when we return.
Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Your next act coming to the stage, funny dude. You may have seen him on MTV or Comedy Central. Put your hands together and please welcome Fahim Anwar. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. Um, I'm getting into Game of Thrones right now. That's my new. Yeah. All right. Big nerd town. Big nerd town. Good to know. I love that show because like everything is so epic on that show. Like whenever they introduce themselves to other characters, they'll be like, "I am Christopher Baratheon, son of Robert Baratheon, ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, keeper of the Night's Realm." Like that was their hello. I wish people still introduced themselves that way. Like, I am Craig Johnson, son of Andrew Johnson, manager of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> He's like, forgive me, your grace. I did not know your father owned a chain of Dunkin' Donuts. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> uh, I love doing stand-up. I have to travel a lot to do stand-up, so I'm like always at airports and stuff. And have you guys seen these like new Best Buy vending machines <laughs> where you can just buy super expensive electronics? <laughs> Who is this for? Like, I think it's only there to impress chicks at the airport, you know? <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? I'm gonna go get a laptop. Um, <laughs> you want anything? Like some Beats by Dre headphones while I'm out there? Let me know. Yeah. Can anyone break a thousand? Anybody? <laughs> Just trying to smooth out the hundred dollar bill. <laughs> These machines. <laughs> I mean, oh. <laughs> I'll see this at airports too. Like families travel together, and like their little toddler kids will have Spider-Man suitcases that are like this big. <laughs> Why is the kid I, like? Is the kid like? Oh no! I've missed my wedding to LaGuardia. Oh, I need my Ninja Turtles. Oh, oh! I'll get a scoop of ice cream. It's a long flight, right? <laughs> Just pack, pack for your kid. It's pointless. Uh, I've been traveling around. I'm walking around New York. I'm visiting a lot beautiful women out here. I gotta admit, just gorgeous. I'm terrible with women, so I have to rely on pickup lines. I'm sure you've heard them, like, you know, are your feet tired? I'm like, why? Because oh, you've been running through my mind all day? You know, that's one. Um, I, I make up my own. This is one that I've been working on lately. This is the one that I do. I say, um, yo, girl, my dick be Edward Snowden. <laughs> and he's seeking asylum in your butt. <laughs> that's one. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's topical, you know? Hasn't worked yet, but it's a number game, you know? It's got to <laughs> keep at it. It's got to work on it. Yeah, so I live in Los Angeles, and uh, a lot of homeless people, you guys have a lot of, I don't know, it's like an East Coast, West Coast homeless thing. <laughs> I don't know. You guys might take the cake. Um, but I saw this the other day in LA. I saw a ripped homeless person. Have you ever seen a muscular hobo? I'm like, where are you getting this protein That's what I want to know. He was like, spare some change. And I was like, no. So I know he's going to blow it all at GNC. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that, though. I wouldn't mind giving him 50 cents if he personally trained me. <laughs> right? I think it'd be cool to have, like, a hobo personal trainer. But it would all be Rocky Balboa workouts because he has no weights to work with. So it'd be like, what you're gonna wanna do? You're gonna wanna lift the trash can and bend from the knees. <laughs> you're gonna feel the burn right in your quads. Yeah, I am. Like, well, it's getting kind of late. I should probably head home. It's like, that's cool. I'm gonna be where I always am. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'll be here. 
Whenever homeless people ask me for change, I like to match their voice. They'll be like, spare some change. And I'll be like, wish I could help you out. <laughs> I just feel like they're less let down, you know, when they hear that voice. They're like, ooh, that guy's got it rougher than I do. I feel like I should give him some change. Because if I was like, I don't have that kind of money right now. He'd be like, I don't believe that guy. He got a fancy voice. <laughs> I've noticed like a lot of homeless people, they'll ask for change outside of grocery stores, which I've never understood. If they were smart about it, they would just ask for food because that's much harder to lie about. <laughs> Coming out of a grocery store, holding bags upon bags of groceries. He's like, spare some food. God damn it. I wonder if anyone would be bold enough to lie to the guy. <laughs> Just be like, sorry, bro, I bought seven bags of light bulbs. <laughs> All the lights went out at once. You know how that, well, you don't know how that goes, but. <laughs> you just have to trust me. I was at this Mexican restaurant recently, and they would give you these chips with your burrito. And so I was out on the patio, there were other people. And these birds would hop up onto the table, and they would snatch the chips away. And people thought it was the cutest thing ever. And this homeless guy walked by, he's like, hey, do you have any change or food? And they're like, no, go away. <laughs> Scram. I just thought it was so weird they were treating these birds better than these human beings. And then I thought, homeless people should just dress up like birds. <laughs> <laughs> like, they would have far more success if they just showed up, like, tweet, tweet. <laughs> tweet, tweet. Can I, can I have a chip? I mean, no. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Did that bird just say thank you? <laughs> I gotta go. Why is that bird pushing a shopping cart? <laughs> it's a nest. Fuck you. I'm curious. Uh, any, any couples are tonight? Clap if you're a couple, yeah? <laughs> I just sank a putt. <laughs> That's cool. A lot of couples come out to stand-up comedy shows. It's a very couple thing to do which is shitty for me as a stand-up comedian because I'm up here doing all the work. <laughs> like, I'm softening her up for you guys. <laughs> She's laughing, you're like, yeah, you having a good time? Yeah, 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 ha, yeah, ha, ha, Drink, 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 yeah, <laughs> Then you get to go home and have sex with her and I'm just playing Madden in my studio apartment. <laughs> I'm your pussy Jesus is what I'm trying to say. Not some recognition. Sex to me is so fascinating just because we as humans like to think that we're better than the animals because we have higher level thought with math and science and art. But then everybody has sex and that's the most primal thing ever. Like there will be some guy giving a TED talk about accelerating particles into each other. And then a couple days later, he'll be like, Same guy. I believe that in my studies. <laughs> I don't know what move. I think it's a Mortal Kombat finishing move now that I. Xiao <laughs> Fang wins. Sometimes, sometimes I feel sorry for sperm guys. Because a lot of times, dudes wear condoms, but the sperm don't know that. You know, they're just chilling in the balls. <laughs> like they're about to storm the beaches of Normandy. <sighs> <sighs> you, you got a girl back home? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, I got a girl. Here's a picture of her. She's cute, she's cute, bro. Then the doors open up and they're like, all right, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Follow me, woo! What the fuck? <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Thanks so much, guys. You guys have been so much fun. Thank you.
stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Roberto Vanderpool is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. We're back live here at Gotham Comedy Club. Put your hands together. Please welcome a buddy of mine. You may have seen him on HBO. Put your hands together and welcome Roberto Vanderpool. <laughs> Yeah! 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 Oh my gosh, this is so white today. Hello. I'm actually Dominican and I'm a black Tino. White folks are looking at me, holy sweat, honey, they come in black? Latinos now come in black? I gotta write this down. I like being black Tino. I like, I like, I'm, I'm like an undercover superhero, you know. Especially when like, like Latinos try to talk about me, I go to the grocery store on purpose, and I always catch them talking about me because the word negro means black. Go inside, they'd be like, watch it, negro. <laughs> que no roba nothing. <laughs> Mira lo watch him, look at him over there, look at him over there. <laughs> I don't speak in Spanish, I messed the hell head up. A quien tu estas hablando de negro, baboso, el diablo fue parigual. You picky Spanish, oh my God, he picky Spanish. Ay, Dios mío, you picky Spanish. Me, I don't talk about you, no. I got a cat named Negro. Negro! <laughs> get out of there! Get out of there! <laughs> He's white, but we call him Negro. <laughs> so cute, right? <laughs> Latino. It's cool being Latino, though. Like, it's hard to distinguish different Latinos because there's so many countries, like Asian people, you know? Like, it's hard to distinguish different Asian. Like, you're Asian, right? People think you're like Chinese, but you're not. You're Filipino, I know. Got bigger eyes, cool. <laughs> Chinese people, you know they're Chinese because they got the same facial expression, right? Like Chinese people, they always look like they're crying and smiling at the same time. Ah! <laughs> Mr. Lee, what's wrong? Why are you crying? I'm not crying, I'm happy today. <laughs> You're confusing me, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Japanese people, you know they're Japanese because once they start speaking a language, they sound constipated, right? The moment you hear they talk their language, they <laughs> Koreans are loud. Ladies, have you been to the nail salon? Uh-huh. The moment you walk inside, that's like the loudest thing ever, right? They open up the door. You want that manicure? Manicure. You pick a color. Oh, you know him, me, big color. I pay first. They always tell you to pay first, right? Make sure you pay now. <laughs> what take you so long, big color, honey? You pick same color every week. <laughs> Candy up red, I know your color. They brutally honest, too. Koreans are the most honest people ever. If there's something is wrong with you, they say it in your face. Honey, you are pedicure $5 today. Take off your shoes. Take off. Oh, honey, you know your toe look a fucked up. <laughs> oh, no $5 today, no. You got to pay $100 more. Oh, come over here. Policy here, say. Fuck up toenail. $100 more. Oh, too much a walk. I got a jackhammer. <laughs> Drill. Filing. Too much a walk. Hey, young man, you good? You good? Let me take off this hot ass jacket. <laughs> Came from the amusement park today. You went to the amusement park, sir? You been doing no? You got one called Coney Island here in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, yeah, the worst amusement park of the world. <laughs> this shit is messed up. You got to take tools to tighten up the ride. This shit is loose. This shit is loose. This shit is loose. This shit is loose! <laughs> you get an America around no horses, just a pole. <laughs> Where the horse at? I don't know, hold on to the pole. Why are there strippers working here? Oh shit, this is a stripper go round. 
They got a horror house too. The horror house don't even got witches or goblins. They so cheap. They got crackheads that scare everybody. And they come out of nowhere too. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo, give me five dollars. <laughs> Boo! It's the real Harlem Shake. Not that bullshit on YouTube, this is the real one. See that crack house of horrors. That's right. From the Bronx too, Bronx, New York is cool. You gotta go to the Bronx, you got Yankee Stadium, that's right. Oh yeah, and the lovely Bronx Zoo. Oh yeah, you go to the Bronx Zoo, there's like nothing but old ass animals. This is a retirement home for animals. I saw a gorilla on a walker. They had a kangaroo with IV. That a lion with no teeth trying to scare you. He got no teeth. Snakes are lazy as hell too. They don't even slip, they just roll. Forget that. This is all. You get it from me. Hey yo, you good? You good? It was hot. Hotter than Africa. But it's cool. You good, man? You good? You good? You look Italian. Italian's in the house. Cool. Can tell. Too cool. You looking cool, preppy. Uh huh. Uh huh. He's like a cool Italian. You know, they got the other Italians, the one they call the Guidos with the muscle shirts. You ever see the ones with the muscles? Muscle shirts and no muscle. And they talk to you like this. Hey, how you fucking doing over here? Hey, Tony, forget about it over here. Hey, they talk to you like Spider-Man. You ever notice? They talk to you like Spider-Man. Hey, you, you freaking talking to me over here? Freaking Goomba over here. My buddy Joe, man, he works out 28 hours in a 24-hour gym. That's all he does. I work out 28 hours in a 24-hour gym over here. 24-hour gym over here. Plan of Fitness, $9.99 a month. I pick them up and put them down. They work out for one thing only, to go to the nightclub to fight invisible people. You ever see this? <laughs> oh yeah, the music come on. <laughs> How you doing there? How you doing there? They turn around, they got the tightest pants on earth. How you doing there? <laughs> Yes! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, India, you slumdog millionaire. I love the movie Slumdog Millionaire. It was one of my favorite movies. See the end of the movie, they came out in the train station, they did this song called <laughs> 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 You slow dog, man. <laughs> Thank you, Roberto Vanderpool. Yeah. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Welcome back, everybody.
Everyone being good? Cool. Show's almost over, but we're still going. Excellent job, everybody. Sir, you actually got better at your clapping technique. Well done. And sir, I'm going to heal your arm after the show, man. I've never been injured, so I can't relate to what you're going through, dude. Never had an injury, man. How'd you hurt your arm, man? You punched a window, so the window won. Okay, cool, dude. You should never lose a fight against an inanimate object, sir. Why'd you punch the window? You couldn't see through it? You, know, you realize when you punch through it, it's, it's the same shit, dude. You know, you're gonna, I'm going to talk to you after the show, dude. I'm going to talk to you after the show, dude. Be careful getting home tonight, guys. We're in Chelsea, New York City. This is a, this is a, this is a very rough neighborhood, okay? If you look at someone the wrong way on the streets of Chelsea, they might unfollow you on Twitter, okay? So be careful out there, okay? I want you guys all being safe. And uh, I'm having a sex party after the show. Uh, you guys are all invited. If you want to come, just follow the smell of awesome. And uh, let's bring everyone back up here, all the comics. Fahim Anwar, Roberto Vanderpool, Andy Hendrickson, Jenna Friedman, Gotham Comedy Club, Axis. I'm the world champion. You guys are fucking winners. Everyone's getting ready.